morning. And I'll call the meeting to order. We are sitting as the County Board of Supervisors, sitting as all special taxing districts. It is March 11th, 2019 at 9 a.m. Regular session of the Board of Supervisors. Chairman Reyes is excused today. He's out of town. Uh, we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Supervisor Porches, would you lead us? Will you please join me in the pledge? I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. First item on our agenda is call to the public. Call to the public is held for public benefit to allow individuals to address issues within the board's jurisdiction. Board members may not discuss items that are not specifically identified on the agenda. Therefore, pursuant to ARS 38-431.01, paragraph H, action taken as a result of public comment will be limited to directing staff to study the matter, respond to criticism, or scheduling the matter for further discussion and decision at a later date. I don't have any request forms, but anybody who wishes to address the board is welcome to do so. Okay, seeing none, we'll move on. Uh, we'll go to the consent calendar. The following items listed under the consent agenda will be considered as a group and acted upon by one motion with no separate discussion unless a board member so requests. In that event, the item will be removed from the consent calendar for separate discussion and action. Uh, anybody want to pull any of the consent items? Okay, if none, I'll accept the motion. So moved. Second. For items one through four? Yes. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Items one through four to be approved as presented. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Ayes have it. Discussion and action items. Action to recommend state approval or denial of a special event liquor license application submitted by Joseph James. Quartuccio, doing business as Always Donate Incorporated for a fundraiser to be held Friday, March 15, 2019, and Saturday, March 16, 2019, and Sunday, March 17, 2019. And who's presenting on that? Well, no, we'll have a, a staff presentation first. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, Chairman and members of the board, Juan Leal Rubio, senior planner, here to answer any questions. Any questions from the board? I do. Yes. Um, I've been addressed with several concerns about this event due to the proximity to the Mohawk Main Canal, which is just to the south of the event. Um, with all the past problems along the main uh, over the last year, and the attention that's drawn to Yuma County. I have a lot of concern with the event, but that's already approved, but adding liquor on top of it. Um, and I just, I, I can't approve something like that. I mean, there were, there's nothing we can do about the event, but adding liquor on top of it concerns me greatly. And it concerns the district who uh, maintains the canal as well as the farmers out in the valley. If you look at the map, um, that's on your package. Where is it here? If you look at the south end of it, and you have County 8th Street, which is not County 8th Street, it's the Mohawk Main Canal Road. Um, the green line next to it, I don't know if we have it up on the uh, screen, but um, the green line next to it is the main itself. So, like I said, I have a lot of concerns, and so do a lot of people out in that area, about having liquor that close to the main water source for the farmers out there. So we did, um, as a staff, we discussed, and there was a temporary use permit that was uh, uh, processed for the event that was also uh, approved, subject to certain conditions uh, to ensure the. Uh, the, the uh, uh, safe and healthy of uh, the people attending the, uh, the, the event. We understand the concerns. Uh, I know that there's been more discussion uh, between uh, administration and uh, the Walton Mohawk Irrigation District. 
Uh, I'm not really sure what the outcome of that, uh, dis those discussions items were. Maybe someone in other in our department could uh, elaborate more on that. Um, Thank you, Maggie. Um, um, yes, uh, the Walt Mohawk did express concern over the uh, event. However, um, the both the temporary use permit uh, was was approved, and the liquor license was also recommended for approval by staff. Um, Walt Mohawk does have the ability to uh, control access along the canal um, if they have concerns over. Uh, the water, the irrigation water, or any anything going into the canal during the event. However, the application met the requirements of the zoning ordinance for approval. Uh, I have a question, Maggie. Was there any talk about a, a temporary uh, barrier between the event and the canal to try to prevent people from you know going up on the canal? <coughs> In the Mr. Chairman, that would be the uh, that would be the responsibility of the Walt Mohawk Irrig Irrigation District. Not the event. Well, uh, the Walt Mohawk Irrigation District could require that they provide barriers, or the Walt Mohawk Irrigation District could also um, uh, put up those barriers. Hmm. Anything else from the board? Um, I'd like to sit. I, go ahead, Mr. Chair. I have some really, I have some concerns with all the issues that we had out in that area with the uh, E. coli last year. I am very concerned about anything that's going to um, possibly create problems for uh, the ag industry out there. So, um, I'm Okay. I just want to make that no. Supervisor, no, I, yeah, I have, I have. A, what's the normal entrance for that? What's the regular entrance, road entrance for for that for that place? Ingress and egress. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, um, it is my understanding that the property does not have uh, legal access. However. Um, staff does not. Um, that is not a. a uh, a reason to deny either a building permit or an activity. They could uh, find a way to get to the property even without legal access, as long as they have uh, phys physical access. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> you go next. I'll go after. I was you. just going to say the um, the district allows local and agricultural traffic to traverse the canal, but it's not set up for high volumes of traffic. Um, has that changed? Because when, when I was selling real estate a long time ago, you had to have legal ingress and egress to be able to sell a piece of property or buy a piece of property. That's not the case anymore? Mr. Chairman, uh, staff is not, um, is not involved in uh, purchase or transfer of properties. So uh, whenever a, a building permit is applied for or even a, uh, a request to split a piece of prop property through a land division permit, uh, legal access as long as uh, uh, the fact that there is no legal access is stated on the deeds, the either a building permit or a land division permit can still be approved. Hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, a Title 11 has that provision. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else? Okay, thank you, Maggie. We'll open the public hearing now. Yes, sir. I'm here on behalf of the property owner. I own the property out there. And um, it came to our attention last week that, oh, I'm sorry, Daniel Miller. And my address is 1425 North Magnolia Avenue. Elko in California, 92020. Um, I have the same concerns that the, the farmers and the Welton Mohawk Irrigation District has with the E. coli outbreaks, and I'm sensitive to that. We've hired a full security company to uh, patrol the area out there on the along the canal road during the time of the event to make sure that nothing or no one does go into the canal. 
and we have uh, signs that are going to be posted, um, and we're going to be having the uh, uh, person on the microphone talking about, you know, the uh, importance of not going in the canal or, or you know, contaminating that because we I do understand the E. coli uh, outbreak that they had last year has caused a lot of concerns with the farmers. So, and I'm, I want to be sensitive to that. Um, as far as the access goes on the road, um, Welton Mohawk was kind of under the impression that they, they own that road and they don't own that road. That road was, uh, an, the, an easement was obtained through my property. I actually own across the canal and on the other side of the road was obtained through my property by the Bureau of Reclamation and the Office of Interior in 1953. So, um, as far as the access on the canal road, I own the canal road and they, the Welton Mohawk Irrigation District has an easement through my property. And so um, that's how we're able to have access to the event legally. And uh, is there any other questions or concerns that uh, I might be able to address? Yeah, uh, is this an annual, kind to be an annual event? This is a first time event here for, for Yuma County. We had two of these events prior in San Diego County, and we had about 250 people show up at each event that we had over there. The first one was like 300, and the second one we had was 250. And if uh, this thing goes smooth for the first time, and it becomes, we would like to make it a yearly thing for the farmers and the community out there. I think it really needs it, something like that. Who are your planned attendees? Um, just the local local community, the people of Yuma, and there used to be a sand drag uh, track over in Dome Valley that was uh, closed down a couple years ago because of some insurance requirements. They had an accident out there uh, with one of the top fuel cars that they had. So we've drawn drawn the local sand drag community, and that's you know what we're doing. We put a 1,300 foot drag strip in. So um, that's the kind of you know just the local community and and, you know, friends and family and stuff like that. Okay. Any other questions from the board? No? Okay. Anybody else from the public? Me, I guess. Sure. <laughs> Welcome. Good morning. I'm Elston Grubal. I'm the uh, <clears throat> general manager of the Welt Mohawk Irrigation Drainage District. Apologize for being a little bit late to show you how up to date I am on the county affairs. I went to your old meeting place. <laughs> because the last time I attended a meeting of this group, that's that's where you met. <laughs> so uh, fortunately traffic was with me and I got here before you, you're done. Uh, I think uh, you have a letter from us. Uh, we're opposed to the event in the first place uh, being located at this location at this time. The event is located next uh, adjacent to the Mohawk Canal, uh, just off Avenue 40 at the Mohawk Canal, it'd be about the 18 ohm station. So there are another 20 miles, 28 miles of the Mohawk Canal downstream that irrigates about 40,000 acres of the valley. A lot of that's in produce that's being harvested now. Uh, you're familiar with the E. coli outbreak uh, that we had last spring. You're familiar with the one last fall in the uh, Santa Maria Salinas area. We really just don't need uh, the negative publicity of something else going on this time. Uh, it is, again, two things next to our canal. There's a food safety issue. The canal bank we maintain. Uh, I'm not uh, sure exactly what Mr. Miller said. We do have a reserved easement uh, across that land. Reserved easement, different than a right of way, right of way, right to traverse across. Reserved easement, right to occupy, right to construct on, right to control. So he is the underlying landowner. However, we own the canal, we own the road, we maintain the road. The road is not maintained, it's maintained as a ditch bank, as a canal maintenance road. It's not maintained to any kind of public road standards. We are concerned with traffic. We've heard estimates anywhere from uh, attendance would be eight uh, to 2,000. We are aware that the event's being advertised on local radio and TV. 
So we're not sure what kind of tin is going to be traveling that half mile road adjacent to a canal. Uh, our understanding our hearing base for liquor license, our concern basically is when you add liquor to the canal uh, proximity, uh, it just exacerbates what could already be a dangerous issue. Uh, I would also point out that one of the things that uh, also concerns us is uh, I think in your packet you have a map of the event layout. If you look at that, you'll see uh, toward the bottom it will show. Can you, can you put that on the screen? Can you put it on the screen? Is this map here? Yes. Okay. Well, I can't get my computer to open, so. I can't see it right now. Okay, here we go. And uh, the uh, green on this map is the Mohawk Canal. Uh, this green down here would be the uh, Mohawk 18-0. This brown area here is labeled Mud Pit. Uh, the Mud Pit is on our map. You may not be able to see this, but it's within the 150 foot easement for the canal. That's not uh, so much worry there as the fact there's a 69,000 volt power line uh, right there. The mud pit will be about 30 feet away from that power line. So <clears throat> that's a safety issue for us as well. We're going to de-energize the 69 kV line during the event. Uh, there's an underbuild, a distribution line that we cannot de-energize because that would take uh, around 40 people, including the event site, uh, out of power. And Ms. Miller's told me that uh, they need power for the event. So we have to leave the uh, underbuilt uh, energized. We will be de-energizing the 69K out of abundance of caution. Uh, we will also, just uh, because of concerns about canal safety, the 18 uh, we've worked with the landowners downstream. Uh, we're going to try to get them watered up. They'll be harvesting produce. There's not enough distance between the event and those produce fields to allow us to do anything if there was any uh, issue with the water, a trash issue, or contamination issue. So they'll be watered out. There'll be no water in the 18 uh, for the event. We will drop the level in the Mohawk Canal. Uh, it's a large canal. As I said, there's 20 some odd, 28 miles downstream at this point. We will uh, close uh, stack water up in the upstream bays and the downstream bays, and the only thing going through here will be the flow for the day. Uh, so it'll be as low as we can get it, and hopefully you know, if someone does end up in it, uh, we're, we're trying to get the depth down below six feet, so uh, someone standing there would have an opportunity to, uh, to get out of it. Not a canal you can get out of very easily. It's two to one side slopes, concrete slides, side slopes, and the top of the concrete several feet below the uh, uh, roadway. So it's, this is our last incident a couple weeks ago. We had a car in the canal. Uh, we were concerned that uh, we found the car flipped upside down. We didn't find the driver. We couldn't find any footprints where the driver got out. We were concerned about that. Turns out the driver floated almost two miles downstream uh, before he was able to get out of the canal. And we're glad he did, but it just kind of demonstrates the difficulty of getting out of those canals. So with that, you know, uh, the, uh, this last weekend was the rib cook-off at Martinez Lake. It was a successful event. They did not have a liquor license. Of course, there were a couple of liquor establishments out there that you'd go into, but the event itself uh, did not have liquor. It's so just, you know, an abundance of caution, the proximity of the canal, uh, the canal not being constructed to county road standards. And, you know, we're just concerned that uh, the addition of alcohol on this would uh, uh, just create, uh, tend to create an unsafe condition. And with that, uh, if I have any questions, I'll try to answer them. So. Well, thank you, Mr. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I have a, I have a question. What, what's the width of the, is that, um, not the canal, but the road. The road, or the width of it. Can, can two vehicles fit go through there? Uh, except for one point, uh, two vehicles should be able to go across there. Uh, the road, the width of the road is a well. Uh, it's about thirty to thirty-five feet. It's it's a fairly wide roadway through there. 
there is a one point uh, where a pipeline comes across the canal and then up. It's a, it's a lateral, it's kind of a, a U-shaped deal, but where it comes up in the roadway, it's a pinch point, it's narrower there. And we place delineated, it's a concrete uh, canal when it comes out and it's a little bit narrow there. We did place delineators there just to, uh, so people could have a little bit more view of that. But two vehicles should be able to get by pretty easy. And that's, you know, uh, uh, a lettuce truck or something like that and a, a normal vehicle should not have a problem. Thank you. I have a, a, a very important, sure, you'll have a chance in just a second. <clears throat> I have what I think might be a very important uh, question if somebody here can answer. I don't know everything, but I think, here's what I think. You have a liquor license, there's controlled consumption, and you have to have uh, security staff on hand. If they don't have a liquor license, Participants can bring their own alcohol in any quantity or type that they wish because it's private property. Isn't that the case? Do you know, Maggie? Does anybody? We assume that is the case. I assume that's the case, too. So when I'm looking at the holistic whole thing, it seems to me you might have a safer event and better control when you have a liquor license. I understand you're opposed to the event and its location, but when you take that thought occurred to me a few minutes ago, I think that's a real important distinction that we need to consider as a body. Uh, Dan? Yeah. On the uh, event where the uh, blue area is right there, we have fenced that off and made that basically our beer garden. And so we're going to have staff checking IDs as they come into that area. So there's not gonna be any alcohol able to leave that area that is okay. sold at the bar. I can't control what people bring in, in their motorhomes and, and the campers, but the alcohol that's being sold at the bar that uh, is being operated by our nonprofit organization is not gonna be able to leave that confined area. Okay. And then furthermore, with the regards to the, uh, to the traffic, we uh, obtained an encroachment permit from the Yuma County for the ingress and the egress and the and the signs. So we're gonna have traffic control out there, making sure that nobody, you know, goes in the canal and that, you know, there's no accidents on the canal road or the main highway out there. And we and we submitted a traffic plan as well. Okay. Okay. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Board. I'm Donald Jones. I am the chief of police of the Welton Police Department. <coughs> I don't know a lot about this event, so I'm learning a little bit today. I just would like to speak from the perspective of law enforcement and public safety on the east side of Telegraph Pass. Listening today, I assume this is a motorsports event, which has an inherent danger to them, spectators and participants alike. As you may or may not know, on the east side of Telegraph Pass, I am the only municipality. We have a limited law enforcement presence on that side of the hill. We have one ambulance. From a risk management perspective and a public safety perspective, I don't know what plans, what insurance issues are in place, but there is one ambulance on that side of the hill. So if a, some accident or some issue arises at the event, that one ambulance is going to be overwhelmed immediately. It's also going to remove any ambulance service from my jurisdiction and the surrounding county jurisdiction. Um, I just think these are some of the issues that have to be thought out, and they may have been thought out in the planning of this, but I, I I'm, have limited knowledge of the planning of this event. It's just some things to consider. Uh, it puts that side of the hill in a, in a, in a bind, law enforcement-wise, ambulance, medical, uh, emergency services-wise, um, so I'm, I'm speaking basically hypothetically in that I don't know what plans are in place to address some of these inherent risks. And thank you. That's all I have unless there's any questions I can answer. Questions? Thank, thank you. you. Thank very you very much, sir. Here. Appreciate it. Yes. Uh, so 
add one more thing to that. Sorry. You have 15 seconds. Um, we, we contracted with Tri-Valley Tri uh, Medical uh, as our emergency provider, and we have a contract with them. We're paying them $250 an hour during the time of the event to be on site when we're having motorsports events in case in the event there is an accident. That was part of our insurance requirements is that we had to have an uh, ambulance on site during that time. And so we've contracted with them, and, and uh, they're gonna, an ambulance is going to be on site so that there's not taken away from the local community. Thank you. Anything else? Okay. Seeing no one else, I'll close the public hearing and bring it back to the board. Well, I've, I've got to stick with my motion for disapproval on it because it's just too great a risk in my eyes for the agricultural as excuse me, aspect of it. Um, with the problems in the last year out there, we don't need anything else drawing attention uh, to Yuma County or to the ag as a whole. Yeah, I agree with you, Supervisor Simmons. Um, I'm, I, I'm gonna find myself in, in a little bit of a different uh, position. We're not here to talk today about whether or not the event takes place. That's, that's, that's past gonna us and, and beyond us. To my point earlier, there are requirements and security obligations when you have a liquor license that won't exist if they don't. So from where I sit, I think we serve the community and the concerns have been brought up greater if, we have, if they have a liquor license because of the greater requirements. Because if they, they're gonna have an area that's contained where people have to you know, show ID, where they have to contain their drinking, <coughs> Uh, that requirement then is there that they have security staff on site. I, I don't know from, like I said, we're not talking about whether or not they hold the event. We're talking about what, whether or not they have a liquor license to control the sale of alcohol. And with the uh, security requirements that come with that, I think you have better control. I, I don't think you have less control. I think you have more. So uh, that's my position on it. Uh, anyone else? Supervisor mm -hmm. Pancrasi. Vehicles and, and alcohol don't mix. I'm, I'm just. But understand. I know. There's no control over what people bring. There really isn't anyway. But at least you that's have added right. security out there that you wouldn't have if they didn't have a liquor license. It's less contained. So that's just where I'm going to be coming from. You know, uh, I, after hearing the, the, the district, obviously they took an approach of preparing for this. So for me, it tells me that they're, they're kind of like in the middle. Either they're against it or not, or, or not because you obviously you took already steps of what you're going to do uh, for, for this event. So... I mean, I do see the the side of the uh, of, of the E. coli breakout, or I mean, uh, but if if, if 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 there's security out there and and traffic control, I I think it's a uh, it's a thing that um, it'll be under control. The people do there be watch, uh, looking out. So, uh, but uh, but I do I, I I what got me was if 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 I would have seen or heard from you, totally against it a bit something else but obviously the district took measures to to do things to to control well so. the district is totally against it it's just they can't do anything about the special use permit that's already been issued right if they would have known that they would have been i believe they would have been fighting the special use permit on top of the liquor license to have it so close that type of an event so close to the main canal during harvest season. Yeah, and you're right in the middle of harvest season on top of that. So now you're throwing more vehicles, possible intoxication, plus lettuce workers, plus lettuce trucks, harvesting equipment, all moving in that area. But remember, that's not what's in front of us today. Yeah. But so we have to look at what the liquor license is going to do. Maggie, did this come in front of us, a special use permit? I don't recall that. Mr. Chairman, 
or vice chairman. Uh, no, the what was issued to the applicant was a temporary use permit. Temporary. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I'll take a motion. We'll make a motion to deny it. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second to deny the permit. Uh, I'm going to call for a roll call vote. Supervisor Simmons? No. No? Yes. No on the special use permit. Yes. 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 You're voting yes on it, but no. To deny it, you're voting yes. Yes. Yeah, okay. Supervisor Pancrazzi? Yes. Alcohol and vehicles don't know. Supervisor Porches? I, I, you know, after I explain, I'm going to have to say yes on it. Aye. You're voting aye? Aye. Okay. Well, I'm going to explain my vote. That's why I called for a roll call vote. Um, I understand the concern. I have the same concerns. And for the reasons that I expressed a moment ago, I'm going to vote against the motion, and I can tell you that everything I've heard from this applicant, they've prepared. I think they've done a good job. Uh, I'm impressed with their preparedness. And again, we're not voting on whether the event should or should not occur. That has, that's beyond us. So my opinion is to have a liquor license and have greater security is better for the public, better for the security of the canal, and better for the community. So I'll vote no. So the motion to deny carries three to one. Thank you. Mr. Vice Chair? Yes. I would, I would remind the board that the order of disapproval would require that you attach a specific statement setting forth your reasons for the disapproval. It has to be attached to the order to recommend <laughs> disapproval. Thank you. Uh, Desiree, do you have enough information from the statements from the board, or would you like a clarification? Um, I believe I do. Maybe you can clarify just by saying we have concerns of the location of the event near the main canal. I think that's the primary concern, right? And we want to protect the ag industry from any possible harmful effects of the event. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. We'll move on to the events calendar. Uh, I'll entertain reports from the county administrator and board members at this time. Go to somebody besides Simmons. <laughs> besides Simmons. Uh, attended the Walton Mohawk Irrigation Drainage District Board Meeting. Uh, Save it to Monday. Pioneer Day Parade uh, event out in Welton. Uh, the County Library Volunteer Luncheon, which was very well done. And I just thank, out, thank our library volunteers as well as all the volunteers uh, that work with all the county agencies. They provide a, a very um, unique service. And special because they, they they allow us to offer um, things that we normally couldn't right due to their uh, their volunteering. Uh, I had a public safety retirement board meeting and attended the uh, battle color ceremony out at MJS. Thank you, Supervisor Parker. Um, I attended the two weeks ago the meeting a YMPO meeting and I just come back from uh, D.C., um, visiting a lot of the congressmen, so it was a good trip. Uh, not pleased what we heard, but the message, but, uh, but uh, overall it was a good, good, good conference. Supervisor Pancras. I'll save mine for the next meeting if that's okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll just simply report I did attend the uh, NATO <laughs> conference and the Hill visits as well. And uh, I'll report on other activities on Monday. So, super supervisor. County Administrator Thorpe. Well, I also attended the NACO conference with uh, also the Capitol Hill visits to all of our congressional delegation. Uh, we had some new people on the Hill, and so it was good to start to have a face to face um, start of a conversation with them. And there is some interest in some of the uh, ideas that we brought forward and some of our priorities. So I'll be working with Paul Melter to follow up with the staff of various um, uh, Congress people to see who might be willing to sponsor, for instance, the federal tax intercept uh, program. If that's something that it, it seems that that was it was received well, the idea. 
So if we can push that forward and, and get specifically um, someone to sponsor on the House and then on the Senate side. Excellent. Thank you very much. Okay. There being no other business, we are adjourned. Thank you.